We're in Fall River, Massachusetts, and there's no better place for us to be for this episode that's coming out right around Halloween than in front of the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast, where Lizzie Borden allegedly killed both her parents a long, long time ago. Yeah, not in our lifetime. Yeah, she, she was acquitted, but still really getting creeper vibes. So let's not hang out here. Instead, let's find out what's on tap at Troy City Brewing. Across the nation, people have turned the hobby of crafting beer into a lifestyle. Amazing breweries are only a few minutes away from your own home. From nano to regional, or micro to macro, the question you won't need to ask is what's on tap? We're able to make the trip down to Troy City and Fall River. We don't know a whole lot about the place. What can you tell us? How did you guys get started here? Oh man, that's a, that could be a long conversation. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we're here for. Yeah, we got yeah. time. 15 years ago, we started brewing in the basement of a five family apartment house. Uh, pretty much about a mile and a half down the road. Just started taking that serious after like six or seven years of doing it and realized that I really enjoyed it. Just kept going and ended up opening this place. <laughs> There's a lot in between, but yeah, it was crazy. It was a long journey. Was there sure. something in particular that you were like, I gotta make this, this has gotta be, this I gotta open. Yeah. I have to open up. Like, Not really. Um, one of the biggest things, you know, that I learned over time was location, trying to find a spot. And part of that journey for like three years was just trying to find the perfect spot to do it. This kind of fell in our hands at the right time. And, um, we were really excited. We, we went right through the whole building and uh, created a really nice small place for people to enjoy. Have you guys been together kind of the whole way? No, I, I was here when, uh, when this courtyard was full of stuff. It's when I came just to help him out. And then... Yeah, I, I met Zach. We were uh, about three months into the build out. So it was almost a total demo. So we had 40 yard dumpsters and we were just emptying them out. And Zach came by one day and um, that's how we met. He was kind of wondering what was going on, and yeah. and I told him come by tomorrow, and maybe you know we work on some other stuff. And I think it was like two weeks after that, Zach ended up being with me through the whole build out and everything. So yeah, it was it was a crazy journey. Oh, yeah. You know, we built everything ourselves. Uh, you know, we painted everything. We went through all the work, and definitely a lot of sweat equity in there. You know, the thing I'm feeling like you guys call it Troy City. And I'm like, we're in Fall River, so I'm, I'm missing that? something. All right. What, so I'm big into the history of, of Fall River. Back in like 1803, they switched names from Fall River to Troy. And it, it had a 30 year stretch as Troy, and then they switched it back to Fall River. And a lot of the history with the buildings, and you know, we were the Spindle City. We still are. A lot of the textile is obviously gone, but you know, Anawan Street was known for the textile and stuff. and. Like I said, everything just kind of fell in. We had the name Troy City before we even looked at the building. Uh, we were a homebrew club. Uh, we started in like 2006. It was like three or four of us that would just brew. And finally one day someone was like, we need a name. Like we brew every weekend, you know, let's name this. And one of the, somebody that was here was like, Troy City is a cool name. And we were like, all right. So that's kind of where the name came and it, it stuck. And really happy we have it. There's also some other businesses in the city that are called Troy City. So it's one of those things just trying to, you know, trying to bring back, you know, the olden times and I don't know, represent. Yeah, well, it's cool because it is like, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't know about that because it was such a small amount of time in the grand scheme of things. I mean, 30 years. Yeah, we get asked that question at least 10 times a day. <laughs> the staff has it down, you know, they, they know it better than I do. I have to ask them, I asked them before. I came on this, you know, I was like, hey, you know what? There's a lot of history to this town, too. I mean, even just with the name change, but still, I mean, there's so much more that's happened in here. For the beers that you're making, is there inspiration for the history to the names or even the brewing process? You know, you're doing certain things, adding certain ingredients. Uh, definitely the names. Most of the names on our tap list are, are streets from the city, uh, things in the city that, you know, have, have, are iconic and um, the cool thing about that is a lot of the locals you know oh i know i know that street and they'll come in and they've never tried that beer before or they never even had craft beer before 
And they're like, wow, that beer is called Maple Croft. That's cool. I got to come down and come check that out. It, and that's kind of how we built our regulars, you know. Starting off, it, it was very difficult. Uh, this street really didn't have much going on. So we were kind of the new guys coming around trying to bring something back to the city. So the, it was tough in the beginning to get people in here and, and, you know, build a brand. But, you know, it seemed like every week we'd get one or two more regulars. And now on a Saturday night, we can look around and, you know, you're saying hi to everybody because you know everybody's name. And Are you getting in any outside people? <laughs> any outside people to come visit? Year two, definitely. I mean, COVID kind of has played a, a big trick in everybody's uh, grand scheme of things. but. We've noticed that we see a lot of different faces now. It seems like the brand's getting out there and people are starting to know. Or maybe we're doing a better job marketing, I don't know. But we're still learning as we go. You know, every day is a new adventure for sure. That's well, gonna be cool though to be able to be, you know, from the town, from really the general area, and be able to build something like this and see people from the community coming in, enjoying your beer that maybe never have before. Yeah, yeah it's. A lot of drinkers I never were into craft beer at all. Um, our flagship beer, which actually kicked a couple of weeks ago, um, Troy, it's our German Pilsner. A lot of the regulars that were coming in would ask, what's the latest beer you have? And it was a great introduction beer into craft. And some people became Troy drinkers. All they'll drink now is Troy Pilsner. If it's not on tap, they're going for something a little bit lighter, like a summer. We try to make sure we have at least one or two lighter beers. But yeah, it's crazy how a lot of people have just got into craft beer. You guys being that transition to for people, like they're coming in, they want that lightest beer, but I mean, how many people then are coming in again and again? And I'm like, oh, that that one sounds interesting. Like, right. what you know, what is the you know, the maple croft like? Right. And then some people that never liked IPAs, I, you know, they would be drinking Troy Pilsner, and then well, I'll try the Seven Hills and the New England IPAs. Don't have as much bitterness, so. It's like that introduction IPA, I call it, you know? And that, wow, that's actually really good. Okay. And now some people that never drink, I don't drink IPA, now they come in there, can I have a Seven Hills? And you're like, oh, okay, that's <laughs> cool. Nice to, yeah. nice to see that you change in styles, you know? Where does your inspiration come from when it comes to making beers? Is this something that is constantly evolving or? Yeah, he's really good with his, the recipes and changing varieties. So we'll always have a, a rotating variety of beers on the tap list, so. It's, it's just fun just to get to brew all different types of beers and I'm, lear I'm learning, so I'm learning from him. So it's... So he has a lot to learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to have, it. it's always different. We're the only two guys in the brew house. Uh, we're the only two full-time employees okay. here. We have seven people on staff that work in the tap room. Uh, my wife's the COO, she runs the books and all that fun stuff. Uh, Michael Ferrer, my other business partner, um, he does a lot with helping us out with new innovative stuff and you know trying to figure out what the next plan is. Speaking of next plan, I mean, what, what are you looking to do after? Like, what's the future here for Troy City? Uh, that's a tough one there. I mean, Sky's right now. the limit. It, yeah. And the question, <laughs> yeah. I feel like every brewery we've gone to and asked this, it's like, well, things have changed. Yeah. It's gone yeah, from, we want to open a new place to, all right, we got to make sure we survive. It's like. Right, I mean, things, we've been lucky enough that the local support has kept us afloat. Uh, when we did shut down and we couldn't have our tap room open anymore, all our regulars were still coming out, buying four packs, showing support, and it kept the doors open. I mean, we were doing roughly 90% of our business through the tap room, you know, and then one day to the next being told you can't do that. So we just kept, we just put our heads down and stood humble and just worked as hard as we could to can as much product as we could, and we got through it. So at least the first phase of it, yeah. you know. Our, yeah, our customers were a great support though, always. Yeah, if it wasn't for them, the support they've given us, yeah. we, we definitely wouldn't have made it. So, it's huge. So what do you say, yeah, going to the brewery? Zach, we haven't heard a lot from you, so yeah. maybe you could take us around yeah. and tour through the brew house then. <laughs> so what kind of you know system you got? Yeah, so we have, we have these three tens, then uh, we have a couple smaller vessels that we use uh, for the specialty stuff that we don't brew all the time. Uh, we have a couple more fermenters on the way which is cool. Yeah. Um, just a little bit of history in the brew house. Last year, we, when we started, we had a two and a half barrel system. So we were brewing four, we were brewing four times a week. Wow. It was really a lot of work and 
uh, a lot we, of hours probably. A lot of hours, right, exactly. But we, we got through the first year, we saved all our pennies and decided a 10 barrel would be more suitable for the brew house. So the size is good, now fermentation we have to add. So we got the first three uh, during COVID. Uh, March, April, when they started coming in and we got the first two piped in, we started brewing on those on the two and a half. So we were triple batching just to fill it up. Then we got the, the boil kettle in the hot liquor tank and mash ton in. So we've only been running this system now for about four to five months. Uh, but it's a great size and now with three more fermenters and a couple brights, I think we'd be able to do probably 1,300 uh, barrels a year out of here. And that's pretty much the size we want to stick around at, just keep the tap room environment. You mentioned you, know, you do some specialty uh, beers on these. Now, how often are you guys, just even new beers in general, how often are there new beers being pumped out here that people either haven't seen yet or haven't seen in a while? So what do you figure? So fermentation on our um, ales is like 14 days after, you know, from grain to glass. So we probably brew, I would say average twice a week. So maybe once or twice a month we're seeing new beers always flowing through. As far as the fermenters right now, what do you have going in there and what's going to be ready to go soon? I mean, this is going to air what, end of October? Right around Halloween. Right around so, Halloween. Yeah. So is any of this going to be ready to go and people can expect to, to be tasting some of this? Yeah, so, so we're actually emptying them right now. Um, we have our Oktoberfest that's getting canned this week. We have um, Gage Hill that we're going to be brewing, which is our toasted marshmallow uh, Imperial Porter. Oh, that sounds really good. So, that like that, so good, that's like nice our Halloween beer. beer. Yeah. Last year we brewed it and we just had it on tap and it sold amazing and people loved it that we decided this year we were going to can it. So Alex Mello, which works on all of our Meteor stuff, he also works on our label design. He's been with us for two years now since we opened uh, he's working on the new labels. I just got an email today and we're already working through the process and it already looks amazing. So totally stoked. That's maybe three to four weeks away. After talking with Keith and Zach, we got a chance to try some of the beers. We checked out the brew house. As nice as it is outside, I think we should head inside now. Yeah, I think we need to hashtag enjoy a Troy and for us to pour four. 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 Four four. This is uh, our flight here for Troy City. You know, we got going from light to dark here. So yeah, where are we starting? Cool. So we're gonna start off with our summer ale. It's uh, really clean, refreshing. Uh, it's got a little bit of lemon in there, so you'll smell that in the aroma. Easy drinking. Definitely. I love that with the summer ale too. I mean, you, it's got that. You know, sit outside. I mean. We picked a good day at the end of September for it to still feel like summer for this. And cut the grass for that beer, you know what yeah. I mean? Absolutely. That's yeah, a nice... Uh, our last grass for summer. and Yeah, you get that little bit of citrus in there as well, but it is, it's really crisp. Goes down really easy. Yeah, we brewed uh, 20 barrels of that this summer. Um, and it's been doing great. We're on our, right at the end of our summer, so we won't be brewing that again. But yeah, it's one of those seasonals that we want to make sure that we keep consistent every year so that the locals know what they're going to be getting. Yeah, it feels real clean too. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I love how, I love how summer ales are because it's just it, you, you drink it and it reminds you of summer. I mean, maybe yeah, it's just yeah. maybe it's in the name, and you know, it's that effect that you hear something, you think about it, but at the same time, it's just like when I think of summer, I think of a beer just like this. So this beer here is a, a one-off brew that we did. We we've never brewed this before. Uh, this beer here was is a wet hop. Um, IPA. We don't call it a New England, but it is hazy and has a lot of wheat in it. But it's got, um, smells, you know, a little sweet. Yeah, it's got a lot of citrus in this citrus. one. This is Happy Hop. Happy Hop. Yep. And the reason why we call it Happy Hop is we used Happy Hop Farms uh, Cascade hops right off of the vine on this one. So yeah, really clean, citrusy. That's a damn good IPA. Oh, yeah. Jeez, it, it is. But it, well, we got some in cans for you to take home. So that's awesome. It, yeah, it tastes super fresh, like right out of the barrel. Like this is incredible. You, didn't you guys say that these are the the hops? That, like within like 24 hours from being picked, they were just thrown right in. Yeah. So I we got in contact with them, um, asking what date they were going to be getting the hops off the vine. They got them off. Uh, called me up and, was, and told me, you know, we're going to get them there in two hours. Okay. 
So they come in with all these fresh hops. The minute they walked in, the whole place smelled like uh, you know, a hop field. It was great. And we were excited. And the wet hop was, is really, really cool. Being able to take something that's literally right off of there, not dried anything, and throwing it in a boil is it's outstanding. It's something different. Yeah. It was a little bit, and I think that might be that you're saying it's super fresh. It's a yeah. really fresh taste, and that's because that's just what it is with a with a wet hop. I tell you what, this one, this is almost like an experience drinking this yeah. beer. You get the, the nice hazy color. You take a, the sniff, the citra. It's incredible, and then the taste. It's it is just it's beautiful beer. I feel like I feel like I gotta you know. I'm not the one from the area here, but this is wicked good. <laughs> there it is, the wicked. <laughs> so this beer here is a collaboration that we did with Moby Dick Brewing uh, from New Bedford, Mass. Uh, my good friend Scott uh, is the head brewer there. So we wanted to brew something traditional for the local area and we brewed a Scottish Ale. So this comes in at 6% ABV. Uh, really has a good, nice malt backbone. We added just a little bit of smoked malt to it. We wanted to give you just that little subtle smoke at the end. I was gonna yeah, say, that's, that's where I'm, I was the first thing wow. I thought was that end there. It's like, it's a little Holy smoky. Crap. Yeah, this is one that you want right from the tap. Like, Definitely. Uh, you, you don't want this sitting for a little bit in a can. Like, you want to experience this right away. This is tremendous. Like, the little maltiness at the beginning. Clean, too, at the beginning. Another, it just, it, it's, it's almost like light feeling at the beginning as it first hits your tongue, and I like that too, especially because you, you're not sure what you're gonna get when it gets darker. Everyone gets starts getting worried, oh, what kind of beer is this? How is this gonna sit? And I mean, even if you said 6%, I mean, this is, it doesn't, not, I wouldn't even think that. You don't, I don't have that. a lot of Scottish ales either. You know, like, you know, there's a lot of flavor with this yeah. one, and I think it's just that smoky finish too. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. That's always just a good taste, such a good taste yeah. to that. New ribs, smoked wings, pulled pork, anything like that. Exactly. It's gonna be a great right compliment now, to it. So this last one here is called Maple Croft. So we add fresh maple into this um, right inside of the For, bright right, tank. Right away. Definitely, and it's it an intense is, amount yeah. of maple. Um, when we first opened, we were putting in a, a little bit smaller amount, and then our customers were always like, oh, a little more maple, a little more maple. You know, and we decided, you know, we, we're here to brew what people want and what, what they want to drink. So maple crop's one of the perfect examples of that. A lot of maple on the nose, a lot of robust flavor in there. I'm a huge maple guy. I'm not just saying this, this, you know, just, hey, you know, make, make him happy. No, this might be the best maple beer I've ever had. And I've tried to find them. I haven't had too many. I'd say maybe this might be my fifth. Out of the five I've had, this is my favorite so far from maple so beers I've had. Because that's, you literally said, I think, and what people are saying to you is what I've always kind of thought, like, we, you know, we've been to other places where it's like, you know, we, got a, we got a maple beer, and you try it, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's there. It's there. I, right away, you smell it, you taste it immediately, and it tastes like that fresh maple syrup, not just, oh, you're going to the store and buying it. Are you using local maple, or, or where are you getting your maple from? Uh, maple is from straight from Vermont. Yeah, definitely. Where it's supposed I mean, to come from. Yeah. We've, always, we've always told ourselves that we're not going to make a ton of product, but the product we make, we want to make with the best ingredients we can find. And that's our biggest thing. You know, we really feel that, you know, brewing is a craft. Um, you can get crazy creative with it, or you can stick traditionally and do things the way that people have done forever. But I've noticed that the fresher ingredients is what is gonna make the freshest product and, and the best product, yeah. without a doubt. And this beer being one of them, like we spare no expense on the maple, trust me. When that comes in, my wife kinda, she looks at me like, wow, we really Maple just, is yeah. not cheap. No. no, it's not, but. It's a commitment. Definitely. But like you, you said, the customer feedback, like it's a little more maple, a little more, and maybe you start to wonder like, how much maple is too much maple? Right. This is the you want it still be a beer. Yeah, maple. we're this not is, putting this any. Is a sweet spot. We won't be putting any more yeah, maple. This is it. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, is perfect. This is awesome. And then you know maple croft. Yeah. So we had to stick with that name, right? So that was the house where Lizzie Borden lived. We started off our episode with you know starting off at the Lizzie yep. Borden house, and that's why it's kind of nice. It's a little tie-in. The yeah. story's creepy. I mean. Yeah, that was one of those like our names come from straight from the team. Everyone there. Is like six of us, so emails will fly out. You know, what are we gonna call this? And we try to keep it all local. And when this beer came out, I think it was like three months into us opening. 
I, and we decided, you know, that the maple with that, uh, that'll be a great beer to keep running, you know. And yeah, why not name it Maplecroft? And the and it has built our brand. Like people, people come in and it was a hit right away. People right come away. in, they're like, you have Maplecroft, and at, sometimes we don't have it on tap because the demand and. We always hear it, you know, yeah. we got to get that maple back on yeah. All right, you know, I have a couple faces in mind just by saying that right now that I won't yeah, mention. Yeah. This has been great. Yeah. I mean, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys. Just the whole day this here. And I mean, you got, I hope you got, I mean, even all these, all these beers, I'm going to get four packs of yeah. them. So <laughs> but I got, I got, I got there, three yeah. of them that you can take <laughs> home today. Perfect. Uh, so I have the Scotch Ale. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, it's got the Happy Hop, which is great. It's refreshing, citrusy, crushable, just it's a nice light summer beer. This is the, and we're both drinking the 1810 Oktoberfest, which which is one of our favorite Oktoberfests, and we've been to Munich for Oktoberfest, and it's still one of our favorites. Yeah. Everything he puts out is absolutely amazing. Um, have not had a bad beer here. Honestly. We're here once or twice a week. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's, that's a given. On our given. own and as a group, actually. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, no, it's great that it's, it's family oriented. It's very tight knit. Um, Everybody knows us here? It's great yeah. that they brought um, beer to Fall River. Because Fall River, Good before, beer to Fall River. before yes. Troy, there was like nothing, really. There were no breweries. Yeah. Yeah. You had to go like at least 20 minutes or so. Yeah. You mentioned how you know, do a lot of service on the tap room. Uh, you know, where are, where else are people getting Troy City beer? So yeah. distribution, uh, we're under Coastal Distributors. Uh, great guys, uh, Alden and Shane. They do a great job for us. We're just starting to get into distribution because we've done a lot through the tap room. Uh, so they're pushing out hopefully about like five to twenty-five cases a week. Far as out in the market, and. They're putting it in really good places up in um, Hyannis, in the Boston area, where we're using it more so people could try our beer, learn our brand, and hopefully make the ride down. So, so yeah, that's all new for us right now. Uh, we are in restaurants, probably about 25 to 30 restaurants right now. Uh, we self-distribute uh, our own uh, kegs in the local area. And uh, Coastal also does it far as more up in the Boston area and the, 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 all the spots. And how does someone get a hold of you if, if there's a bar or restaurant, say in Massachusetts somewhere, that's like, yo, we like what we're seeing here, you know, we want to get this on tap. How are they getting a hold? Is it you guys or Coastal? It, it's both. They can call up Coastal Distributor. Um, they will they'll take care of all the contact information and then, you know, we'll send over what we can. Um, the other thing is they can hit up TroyCityBeer.com. Uh, there's a spot on the bottom there uh, that you can guys, e they can email us and we're getting about one to two emails every other week of new establishments so we're trying to do our best to uh, keep up and get the beer out. So as we wrap up our day here in Fall River, Massachusetts, we went around the corner from Troy City Brewing to see this place, Battleship Cove, and this is so cool. Uh, but back at Troy City, we can't thank Keith, Zach, and everybody there enough for the incredible day we've had. Yeah, this is a badass way to end the day. You get the battleships in the background, beautiful sunset. This has really been an incredible start to our weekend here in Massachusetts. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere, so you can see where our journey takes us next on What's on Tap. Cheers.